Yeah, thanks, Kayla. Uh, so my name is Katie Morton, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I've I have a YouTube channel, so I create a lot of YouTube videos educating people about mental health, mental illness, how we can best take care of ourselves. And today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about self-care, um, ways we can manage isolation because we're all feeling it. Um, yeah, because May is Mental Health Month, if you didn't know. So it's a great time to bring awareness to our mental health. And that's kind of where I actually want to start. Um, oftentimes I think people talk about mental health and we don't even know what that means. When does it, when do we need to get help? What if we are feeling really down or, or really low? Um, everybody has a mental health, just like we have a physical health, right? We go to the doctor, we get our physicals, they draw our blood or, you know, does your knee, if you hit in the knee, does your foot kick out? Like all the basic stuff. Um, we have, we have to take care of our mental health in the same way. That's why I like to think of like therapy or uh, any kind of counseling or just checking in, journaling, all the stuff that I'll get into a little bit later, um, it's just part of maintaining mental health. The same way we try to eat uh, a balanced meal, we try to do some exercise, even if it's just stretching in our chairs, especially now, I'm at home too, so it's a little limited. Um, but everything we do to take care of our physical health, we should do kind of a version of that to take care of our mental health. Um, and the, the way that a mental health turns into a mental illness, just the way physical health can turn into, let's say, the flu or, or you know, the coronavirus, like that's, I'm sure, at front of mind for everybody, um, is when our mental health goes, goes from being something that we can manage, right? We might have a down day or an up day, but overall we're okay. It goes into a place where we can't function right? We just don't feel good. It's hard to get out of bed. It's, we don't like the things we used to like. Um, maybe we're extra irritable and edgy. Um, that's when it kind of becomes a problem and something that we should talk to people about. I think that that's my number one tip for any of you if you're feeling down, especially now because we're all feeling it, right? Things are different. I did a video on my YouTube channel last week about like the grief of what's going on and how I feel sad about that our life may not return to what it was before and I'm sad. And so know that it's okay to feel however you want to feel or need to feel right now because this is something that we've never gone through before. Even as a clinician, it's not something I can say, oh, I talked to a patient last month about, no, like this is all new. This is new to everybody. We're just learning as we go along. I can't pull on research from 10 years ago or anything like that. We're just, um, we're all doing our best. So know that it's okay to feel how you feel um, and just talk about it. And so I want to get into some ways that we can best manage isolation because I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing a lot of people. Um, and even though I'm trying, right? Like I, I reach out, we do some FaceTimes with my mom. Um, I've done some Zoom meetings with friends and I encourage all of you. I know that um, all of your staff have been really helpful in helping you get that stuff set up. Um, I'd encourage you to try that. I'd encourage you to, you know, to make time for it and let them teach you. Um, because it is the main way to connect right now, but I do want to also acknowledge that it's not the same, right? It, it, we still feel disconnected. And so even if we are trying to see our family and children and friends, we can still feel isolated. And um, I wanted to, like, I was thinking it was like a week ago, I was watching the news and there was this psychiatrist on her name's Dr. Christine Moutier. I've had the pleasure of working with her in the past. She now heads up, I want to say it's like the National Suicide Prevention Center in New York. But she said that um, instead of calling it social distancing, we should call it physical distancing because we can still be social. We can still connect. And I think when we keep calling it like social distancing and keeping our distance from people, it can feel even more isolating. So I just like to reframe it like that. It's just, you know, um, we're just physically distant. I can still feel connected to you. I can still spend time with you. I can still do all the things. Um, you know, that feel good. So anyway, she said that and I thought, oh, I just like that. Like sometimes a simple change of a word can change your perception, right? Um, and my first tip to dealing with uh, isolation is really to start small. I think a lot of us feel like, or I'm just going to keep it personal. Like I think I feel like I need to be talking to a lot of people and I should be reaching out all the time. What am I doing? I mean, things are slower now, so I should be doing so much more. Ugh, all this stuff to like, connect, 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 call, 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 but that's a lot of energy out. Um, I always like to talk of energy out as like breath. Like if I'm just breathing out all the time, I'm going to pass out, right? We know that it, it's just too much. So we have to breathe in and the breathe in is the self care of this. It's the taking the time that I need to recharge before I talk to someone else, because as much as I love engaging with my friends and family, 
sometimes it's tiring, especially now if one of them is going through a hard time. Like my sister-in-law works at Costco. So she's out every day and I worry about her and you know, how is her health? And she talks about all the people that they're letting into the stores now and how that stresses her out. And that, that can just feel really heavy. It's not that I don't want to talk to her or don't enjoy it. It can just be a lot and I can feel very overwhelmed. And so after speaking to someone, I need a break. Right. And so starting small, I think is a, is a better way to, to frame this where it's like, Hey, maybe instead of, trying to set up calls with all of my children, all of my friends and family so that I have like five calls a day or three calls or whatever. Maybe I just plan like two a week because that feels good to me. That's what I have energy for Um, because that breath out has to be followed by the breath in Um, and some of that self care, some of that time alone maybe, or making sure we're getting enough sleep. There's all sorts of things we can do to to help ourselves feel better. Um, And so just break it into little small things. Like maybe today is the day where you just place a call to someone, which I know sounds kind of silly, but it's like sometimes I'll just shoot a text or leave a voicemail with someone that I want to connect with and say, hey, let's come up with a time in the next week or two where we can connect. And that that check, I've done it. I started small. I've got things moving. Um, And that just keeps me feeling a little bit better. Like I'm still reaching out, but I'm not overwhelmed. Um, And so, yeah. Figure out what starting small is for you. Everyone's going to be different. I also recognize sometimes we have uh, anxiety or extra worry right now. And if even the thought of reaching out to people is overwhelming, then we have to find some ways to calm our system down. Meaning, maybe we take some time, take some deep breaths. One of my favorite tips for, for calming any anxiety or extra worry is four by four breathing. It's easy. Breathe in for four. We hold it at the top for four breathe out for four. If you can do that comfortably, try to do it four times. Um, And that just really helps calm us down. It can soothe our system so that maybe we can make one more call or maybe we can, you know, plan that Zoom meeting or whatever it is that um, helps us feel more connected. Um, So wherever you're at is fine. And then my next tip um, and something I've been (laughs) struggling with off and on throughout all of this is having some kind of a flexible schedule. And What that means is some of us are morning people. Some of us are not. I am not a morning person. (laughs) So don't try to, you know, give me a call at like 7 a.m. because I'm asleep. Um, But figure out what works for your body, especially now. Maybe we're tired earlier. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm tired by like 3 p.m. I almost need a nap. That's okay. Right now is a little bit weird and it's a little bit overwhelming. But if we try to structure this in a schedule, we're like, Hey, I know that I do best if I try to wake up between 8 and 9 a.m. I'm just throwing around numbers, whatever works for you. But we have to know what feels good for us, right? I don't know about um, some of you, but I'll have this like, well, I should get out of bed. I should be doing all of this. And I I call that shooting all over it because it just ruins our day. We can't just keep telling ourselves things that we should be doing. We're going to do what feels best. So figure out the best time to then we need to make sure we're eating regularly. I know this sounds very simple and silly, but you'd be surprised what things get thrown off kilter when our world just isn't the same that it used to be. Um, so make sure that when you get up, like within an hour or two, you've eaten breakfast, had your coffee or tea or whatever it is. Maybe then you watch the news, but limit that news. I give myself 30 minutes and I got to shut it off because it's just going to be the same stories over and over told in a different way and I'm exhausted. So have a little bit of a structure. Make sure that you're showering at least like once to twice a week, more if it feels good for you. I swear a shower can change your life. But keeping some of this structure, right? I get up around this time, maybe I take a quick cat nap at three, I'm fine with that. And then maybe I go to bed at like nine or 10 p.m. or 11 or whatever, right? We're trying to keep some kind of ritual, some kind of schedule. And then maybe going back to like our first step, maybe Wednesdays are the day we do reaching out to people. We reach out to one person on Wednesdays and then on Fridays we try to do a Zoom or something. Like just try to plot out your weeks with some schedule because the thing, um, one of my friends made, I thought a very good joke the other day. She said, when people ask what day it is, I always just say it's Blur's Day because they all (laughs) stream together. And I think if we just had a little bit of a structure, it would just help us feel better. It helps us feel more grounded, right? It's almost like we have these little like posts locking in our day, keeping us moving forward to the next day. And so 
pay attention to how you feel. If you feel better sleeping in a little, I encourage you to let yourself do that. If you feel bed go, or feel better going to bed earlier, let yourself do that. Try to just figure it out and then keep it in some kind of structure um, because we'll, we'll go to bed, fall asleep more easily, stay asleep, we'll feel more rested, we'll have things to look forward to. Um, yeah, so maybe take some time or talk to someone and try to figure out what would be a good structure for you. How often do you like to talk to people? These are all things that are going to be different from one person to the other. Um, but yeah, take some time and put it together because it, it really helps. Like I know that I'm not a morning person, so I don't wake up until like eight or nine and that just feels good for me. Um, and I set my alarm for nine, usually wake up before it, but Hey, you just, you don't know. Um, so yeah, doing that will just help give us a little bit more structure, help us feel like we have the energy to connect and all of that good stuff. Um, and then my next tip is because being isolated for a long period of time, which I know a lot of us feel like this is way longer than we had anticipated. Um, it's closely linked to depression. And I know that that can sound like, oh, womp, womp, that's so horrible. But a lot of us go through depressive times, little periods in our life where we just don't enjoy the things we used to, right? I was talking about this earlier, like we can feel really down. That's all, we have. we're going through this adjustment period. And so we can feel bad, but there are ways to help manage that. And that's why one of the things that's really important right now is to notice our self-talk. And so that's my tip is to make sure that your self-talk is a little bit more positive. And what I mean by self-talk is like, you know, that voice in your head that will judge other people, judge ourselves and our situation. It's the voice that sometimes when I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, you did not sleep well. It's that voice. And we need to pay attention to that voice and make sure that it's a healthy, happy, positive one. Because too often we can just talk trash to ourselves day in and day out. And then no wonder we don't, we feel bad, right? It, no wonder we can't think of something positive or that we're grateful for because all we've been feeding ourselves is just negative stuff. Um, and yes, I know positive self-talk can be very hard. Even just noticing what we say to ourselves sometimes can be difficult and shocking. So take your time with it. Today, try to pay attention to maybe two things you say to yourself and then consider how could I make those more positive? Because maybe one of those things is like, uh, I'm so lazy or... Um, I'm so stupid sometimes. I'm so forgetful. All those things we tell ourselves. But maybe instead we say something like, um, you know, people care about me. I'm valued. I'm doing my best. Those are all great ways to start. Um, but if even thinking positively at all is really difficult, I like to use a tool that I call bridge statements. Thinking that like uh, one side of a, you know, across the river is the negative thought. And then the other side is the positive one. And we have to build a bridge to get there. We can't just jump. It's too far. It's like, I already think I'm stupid, lazy. I'm a jerk. Nobody likes me. I can't say I'm smart, so productive and everybody loves me. Like, I just don't believe it. Right. It can be so different. Um, and so bridge statements are the maybes, the possibilities. It's possible that I'm not as lazy as I think I am, but it may be it's possible. And so we have to kind of live in that. It's like that beginning of that bridge, right? And then we get to, it's possible that I might be productive. Sometimes I can be, and we're just kind of building. And I know it can be hard, but those are sometimes easier, right? We can, we can live in the sometimes maybe it's possible. Um, so once we notice what those negative self-talk things are, we can start building over towards the, I'm amazing, everybody loves me, I'm so productive, you know. I haven't made it there yet, but I can tell you, I have moved closer. So just keep with it little by little. And every, everything that I say to myself that's negative, some of them are easy to fight back against and some aren't. So like, use your bridge statements when you need to. There's nothing wrong with, especially if we're having a down day, like I'm sure a lot of us are. It's okay to say like, hey, today it's just possible that, that I, I might... I might have a good day today. Yet people might pay attention to me. I might be loved or feel loved today. That's okay. We can live in that. That's that's an okay space to be in. But just make sure we're trying to build it over towards, you know, I'm good. People love me. I do the best I can. All of those, you know, more positive things. And then um, my next tip, and this is something that sounds weird, but it's been really helpful for my patients and my viewers alike, is offering yourself some loving touch. Like, it's okay to hug yourself. We can do that. Might feel kind of silly, but we need that, that feeling, that squeezing. One of my patients, um, when she has trouble sleeping, she tickles her arm. Has anybody ever done that before? 
I remember doing this when I babysat to a little girl. She, it would help her sleep. It would soothe her. Everybody's going to be different, but find some kind of touch. This could be like a facial massage, Ooh, especially our neck, shoulders. I think I talked about this in our last talk about our stress response, but because everything just feels chaotic sometimes, we're in this heightened stress response. And our neck, shoulders, jaw, those are all the muscles that are included in that, right? You know when you get stressed, you, ooh, we feel, we feel it there. So maybe loving touch is doing a little bit of this, you know, a little bit of some neck rolls, taking some time to just offer some loving touch to yourself. This could be rubbing your feet, rubbing your hands. I mean, I haven't, I love to get pedicures. That's like one of my self-care things and that's not possible right now. So I rub my feet. Feels nice. You know, I take care of my toenails as best I can. I'm not as good as a lady who normally doesn't, but I'm doing my best. But you just have to make some time to offer some of that loving touch um, and just figuring out what works for you. Um, but I think if, if we don't know, if you think, oh, I just don't know about that, like start with the shoulders. We, most of us, like that's where we hold most of our tension and stress. So spending some time just rubbing a little bit. Or if you have a partner with you and you, you know, you want to take turns, you can do that too. I think that that will help us all feel a little bit better. If you need a hug and someone can offer it to you, it's okay to ask for it. Um, we're all just kind of needing some of that soothing that we normally get from, you know, you go out to breakfast or lunch with friends and you, oh, hi, so good to see you. We're just not getting that now. And so we have to find another way to kind of fill that, uh, that need. Um, and then the kind of the final thing I want to talk about is just remembering that we're not alone. And I know that that sounds really like, duh, obviously, but I think a lot of us forget that when we are isolated, we start to think that we're all alone in this, that nobody understands how we feel. I don't know what it is about like that negative self-talk and like even depressive thoughts. They're very isolating. They try to tell us that nobody understands that we're being weird, that something about us is wrong because we feel this way. Like, I, I know personally, I'm definitely more of a sensitive person, which I think makes me a better therapist, but some of my friends are, are not responding to this situation like me. And I could take that in my head and think, well, geez, Katie, like get it together. Like you're a therapist, what's going on, you know? But instead, I'm just doing the best I can. Everybody's feeling their own way about this. We're all going through it. And that can in and of itself be kind of, just nice. It feels like a little bit of like, we all have some self-compassion and compassion for our neighbors and community. So just remember that this is worldwide. Everybody around the world is feeling this in some way. And you have people around you who are going through it too. This isn't specific to you, which I think is kind of nice because oftentimes when we're going through a tough time, we've lost a loved one or we've been through a big, you know, maybe we've had to move and things have been stressful or someone, you know, it, we can feel like it's all, it's all on us. That we're the only one experiencing this because oftentimes we are, but this time we're not. So talk to others about it. It's okay to, to vent about it. I like, I made a video last week just about how I was grieving this and it felt good to read people's comments. Me too. I feel that way too. Um, and the great thing about being in a community like all of you in, is that you have other people to talk to. At breakfast, it's okay to say, yeah, today's a good day. I feel this or today's a bad day. I'm, I'm grieving about this or I'm sad about that or my, my birthday or my daughter's birthday is just coming up and I'm bummed. Or, you know, I think the more that we talk about it, the less isolated we'll feel um, because, again, it's that connection. I don't know if any of you listened to my last talk. Of, was it like a month ago maybe? I don't know. Time is an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably like a month ago. I was talking about how the real way to help us all feel better any day, every day, is connection. And that's why this is so difficult. So if we make time to talk to someone and say, hey, yeah, I, I'm feeling sad about this, or I'm worried about that, or my, you know, I was having a big birthday coming up, like my father-in-law was having a 70th birthday, and we wanted to have him come into town to visit us, and we couldn't do that, you know, for many reasons. And um, I was sad about that. And just talking about it and having someone else say, yeah, I was bummed about, I had this happen. We can all share in the experience. And I think that that, again, is back to that connection, back to that calming and just we're all in it together, right? And we'll get through it together. But nobody gets better by just stuffing it down and trying to pretend everything's okay. It's okay to not be okay right now. Um, and I think it's just, you know, using some of these tips 
will help keep our days moving, but also allow us to vent it. And kind of, I always call it like, you know, when you have a pot on the stove and it, it or like teapot and it starts to make the noise, you know, um, you let some steam out and that noise stops. And so it's like, we have to let some of that steam out. Otherwise we're just, you could explode. And so, um, you know, talk to each other. That's the great thing about it is you have, you have staff, you have other friends and other community members. Um, yeah. And if you're able to get online too, that's a great way to communicate too. So those are some of my tips. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to offer other things. Um, whatever you guys need. Okay, perfect, Katie. I was taking notes like crazy. <laughs> good um so if you guys have questions or comments um at the bottom of your screen there's a little microphone um if there's a red line through it that means we can't hear you um if you want to just click that little microphone um that should allow us to hear you so that red line will go away and then if you want to chat um uh, let me just say the chat is open and so you should receive some sort of like little notification that there's a chat group also. So you can chat in your questions and we can um, read it from there too if you don't have a microphone on your, on your computer or tablet. So anyone has questions for Miss Katie? <laughs> that was good. I mean, I yeah. even, sometimes I feel like, like this is not really for me, but every time I've sat and listened to you, I'm like, oh, that's so good. Like. And it is for me, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think a lot of us feel that way. We're like, I'm doing okay. Like whatever. It's fine. I know about self-care. I even, um, something I will mention, I don't even like the word self-care because I feel like it's been twisted so much into like, I have to spend all this money. I have to go get a massage and like somehow like get into face masks if I wasn't already. And like, there's all these things that I think we've become like we associate with self care when I like to think of self care as it can be done in like 30 second increments. If we done in five minute increments, it could be, if I'm having a tough time, I go into the bathroom and I sit because sometimes that's all the privacy we get. Like a lot of people are home with kids and stuff. So it's like you lock the door, <sighs> we breathe you know, maybe we throw some water in our face, that's self-care to me. And so I think finding easy ways to do that is important. Like, that's why I mentioned, like, making sure we're eating regularly, drinking enough water, like, taking showers, like, that it sounds so simple, but we all know some days that can be, like, all we've got the energy to do. Um, and so just doing some things that make you feel better. Like, my grandma just the other day, because um, she's home alone, so I try to call her every day, and she was like, I washed my sheets and put fresh ones on the bed and I showered and that's all the energy I had, but I felt so good to get that done. And I think, you know, sometimes you have to remember that just the basics. I can feel so good. I think too, um, like there's a, like, a feeling of when you like take a breath inside, but then like when you do like that four by four breathing outside, like, just that fresh air of just like, ah, oh, just feels so good in your lungs. Like, and I don't, like, my house is not cool or not hot. Like, it just, I don't know, normal yeah. degrees. Yeah. But, you know, just something. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, Evelyn. Oh, yeah, we hear you. Okay. I wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed that. It, it um, and I feel like I'm doing most everything that, uh, that you suggested. Um, one thing I really love is the Zoom, and I'm able to do, um, you know, like um, I had a, a granddaughter-in-law who just uh, graduated. She got her bachelor's degree. Oh, wow. And, um, and I was able to visit with them. They live in Maine, but mm -hmm. I was able to visit with them because of Zoom, and I'm able to, you know, get on, uh, you know, chats with different family members because of Zoom, and I love that. Yeah. And I wanted to tell you something, though, that has nothing to do with anything else except that your eyes are the exact same color as your outfit. Oh. Oh, thank you. That, that really is. It's, it's so pretty. I kept thinking of that the whole time you were talking. But anyway, it's, uh, I appreciate this. I think it's good for us. We all need it. We all need yeah. it. I yes. just want to know when we're going to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. It, trust me, I'm in California and they just did the like first part of phase one. And I swear, I never know what any of it means. Like, I know I feel like it's I know. always changing. I don't understand. And, 
and I do my best to be informed, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is weird, but I'm glad that it's helpful and I'm glad that you've been doing all those things. Um, yeah, cause it, I, I really am. I'm, I'm eating, I'm drinking water, I'm doing, you know, and I'm exercising, um, um, I, in my room, of course, mm-hmm. and, um, and I exercise with Michelle when I can. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm not able to do that. But anyway, and I walk every morning. I walk six laps around, which is half a mile. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and I'm getting enough sleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of sleep. But, you uh, need both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but I wanted to thank you very much for this. Yeah. Of course. I'm glad I can help out in any way, you know, because okay. that's the thing. We're all in it. Yes, we are. We're all in it together, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we okay. really are. Doing the best we can. Okay. Well, you take care. <laughs> Thank you. You too, Evelyn. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, it does help to do, just to have some things that you count on that you're doing. Um, you know, like drinking water, like doing some exercise. And I was telling my audience, because I have a lot of people who watch my videos who have like chronic pain or um, mobility issues. And I always say like, you just do what you, where you're at that day, like do what you can. Um, even if that means, like I, so I did the stretching example, because even if that means we just stretch at our chair, um, that can just feel so much better on our low back and it gets our blood pumping and it gets us doing something. And so don't feel like you have to, do a ton of exercise if you can't that day. Um, sometimes just just walk in one lap or, or stretching, you know, doing your best, touch your toes if you can, or even just moving your wrists around, anything like that. Like the head rolls, like we talked about, those are all easy ways to just get a little, any kind of movement. Anybody else have any comments? All right. Well, if not, we will let you guys go. Um, don't want to cut anybody short, but Katie, thank you so much. This was good. Um, even yeah, if it of course, was thanks just, for having me again. Even if it was just for me and Evelyn, like it was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Shannon, she's saying. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Katie. Really thank- my favorite. I was so excited that you were coming back. Cause oh, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to, yeah. A, yeah. It's just such a nice, like, we're all thinking it and we are all in it together. But to have, like, that outside voice instead of us just saying it to each other, the outside voice to remind us, like, hey, but really. Yeah. This is happening to all of us. And it sucks equally for everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> None of us are going anywhere or seeing anybody or doing anything fun. <laughs> Exactly. And it's nice. It's nice. Like, even if it sounds, sounds bad, but it's like, you know, there was saying misery loves company in a way. It's like, we at least like to know that we're not the only ones going through this. Like no one's out like having a fun lunch with friends right now. You know, it's not happening. And, um, and it's a bummer, but we we'll, we're all in it. We're all feeling some kind of suck right now. <laughs> and we're all learning all yeah. kinds of new ways to connect and yeah create exactly so things we never would have done because why would we think about it any other time yeah no it's true it's a, it's sometimes a much needed and nice pause to be like okay what do I really want to put energy into who do I want to connect with um all of that is, has been kind of interesting for me just to allow myself to like think about that versus what we usually do which is like push through rush through you know do things so quickly without thinking Um, now we can take some time and thought, you know, think about it. Oh, and I do want to offer to, I mentioned it briefly to everybody, but journaling has been helping me. Um, and when I say journal, I don't mean like, cause I, trust me, I grew up, I kept a diary when I was little, which is hilarious to read these days, but, um, I don't mean like dear diary today. I went, you can do that if that's helpful for you, but something that a lot of my viewers, um, and patients alike have enjoyed is what's called like a five minute journal. Um, and what that essentially, you can purchase them online if you want, if you prefer to have it like that. But in reality, if you have any kind of paper, you can just write like, um, you know, the date, because it's kind of fun to go back and look and see how you've progressed and gotten better at certain things. You can write two things you're grateful for, three things that happened that day that were important to you, and uh, one thing you hope for tomorrow. And it just takes a little, you know, it's pretty quick. You can pop through it. 
Um, the goal, that's why it's five minutes. It's like, you don't have to sit down for 30 or an hour and try to think of all the stuff to write. Um, that can be helpful too, especially for me, it just helps me get it out of my head. So I'm not like, I don't know. And it turns out more positive, right? Cause it's all about like, what am I looking forward to? What am I grateful for? Um, yeah, it's been really helpful during this time. So if that's something that you'd want to give a try that that could help too. And, um, easy to do right before bed or even first thing in the morning, if you want to do it that way, where it's like things that I'm, you know, it still works in the same way, whatever is easy for you. And having those limits makes it feel less stressful than like you have to sit down and mm -hmm. come up with all these things to write forever. Totally. What do I write about? I can't tell you how many times people are like, you talk about journaling, but like, what do I say in there? <laughs> and I'm like, you can say whatever, but that's the problem is it's too broad. Sometimes we just need, that's why bullet journals is another, if you want to like uh, Google bullet journals, it's similar. It's very sm short snippets of your day and stuff like that. Um, but I really like the gratitude focus and like things you're looking forward to um, just keeps our brain in a more positive space. Kind of talking about those positive self-talk and those bridges I think that's all part of it. Cool. Any other questions, anybody? I promise I'm very friendly and nice. I, there's no bad questions. <laughs> Everybody's so quiet. My audience is like coming with the questions anytime I do anything. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. All right, Miss Katie, thank you so much. This was Yeah, great. thanks for having me. Yes. You all take care of yourselves. It's good to see your faces. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye. Bye, Katie. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.